guys, what's going on? It is Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. As you can see, I am joined by 21st player in the world. It is Dandelion, and he's playing well. He's playing this deck that you guys can see below me. Can't wait to share his gameplay. Had a lot of requests to get this guy on the channel. Tried to last season, couldn't make it happen. Of course, with the time zones, Japan versus United States, it's quite, uh, it's more challenging than your average pro. But I'm so thrilled to get him on the channel today, guys. His gameplay is insane. Using this deck is an, that is an oldie but a goodie, and this is the gameplay that you guys will definitely want to study. And what are we going against right now in top 20 ladder? Are you kidding me? Mirror? A mirror deck? Uh, anyway, uh, guys, a couple of quick scheduling notes before we concentrate on this gameplay, which, as I was saying, if there's one guy you want to learn from in terms of playing this deck, if you've never played it before, or if you've, it's never been kind of your cup of tea, Skeleton Barrel, who even plays that card anymore, uh, Dandelion's going to be the guy you want to watch, the guy you want to study, the guy you want to emulate inside the arena. However, scheduling note, actually, before scheduling note, Thank you guys so much for using creator code CWA. I know it gets repetitive and dumb to hear us creators announce it, you know, all, all the time, basically. But I have to thank you guys. It's really cool. And I, as promised, I am reallocating all the money, actually more than the money I've gotten from the creator code so far, right back into the community to support community leagues. So all the 5% or whatever the heck it is that gets back to us creators out of your using my code in the shop. It's going to go right back into the community if you use code CWA. So I guess I really appreciate it, guys. It's really cool of you guys to be able to support us creators. If not me, then just make sure you're using it on somebody in terms of the content creators inside the game. Also, uh, there's a TV rally that's going to be dropping tomorrow. So stay tuned here. I'll be putting out at least one video, probably two, maybe three videos uh, talking about what is coming inside the next season of Clash Royale along with maybe balance changes. So stay tuned for all of that. Turn on your bell notifications, subscribe, whatever. And what is going on here, dude? What is going on in this match? <laughs> oh my god. So yeah, stay tuned for that stuff. Uh, a lot of content coming at you guys in a short uh, period of time. And uh, last but not least, because of all that content likely dropping tomorrow here on the channel, I probably won't be doing the Q&A on the community tab until later on, like early next week, just because I don't want to overwhelm my audience with notifications. Anyway, here we come, and it's a good game. Dude, the, guy's the guy threw in the towel, man. It's, uh, what is this guy playing, dude? This is a mockery of top ladder. <laughs> so let's go into the next match. Hey guys, but real quick before the next match, today's video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends, where I have my second YouTube channel. Just hit 5,000 subscribers. I'm really excited about it. I love this game. I do it for free on my second channel. It is a strategy RPG game that is incredibly addictive, incredibly fun, tons, hundreds of champions, multiple hundreds of champions, and they just dropped a brand new patch, a brand new update for this game with a bunch of new stuff added in, including including a battle pass, which is, is just a lot of fun, and it, is, it makes the game even more addicting than it already is. So guys, check out my channel. Make sure you download the game using my link in the description below. I invite you to, to kind of join me on my raid journey. This app has an amazing rating in both Google, uh, Google Play and in the iTunes app store. People who play this game love this game. And again, I have an awesome bonus for you guys right now. If you download using my link, check it out in the description below, and you get all this stuff on the screen for free using my link it's only good for 30 days though so please act now guys thank you so much raid shadow legends for sponsoring today's video all right guys thank you uh again for supporting me these ads definitely help my channel they're really what you know they're they're uh yeah it, it's a huge part of you know doing this full-time supporting my family and stuff so i appreciate you guys and i appreciate you guys again who checked out my second youtube channel uh ash raid shadow legends if you have any interest of course in the game anyway going into this next match it's anaban again dude anaban either plays ladder 24 7 which he probably he might do uh, or we just happen to always face him in these live top ladder videos. He's always top ladder too, because right now we are currently 17th in the world. So yeah, this is going to be very interesting. So here it comes. We know what deck it is. We faced it in what? Not yesterday's video, but two videos ago. It is the Balloon Freeze deck. And uh, Anaban, man, just a, just a fun player to watch. I always get so intimidated for the player that we're spectating when we're going against Anaban here. So Baby D gets one fiery breath on that left tower. We go with the uh, attack with that miner in the obvious spot. And it was caught by Anaban using the Lumberjack. Let's see if he goes in with a Balloon here here or what he decides to do 
Looks like no play. We go with Skeleton Barrel. So as you guys can see in terms of habits, routines, whatever, tactics by Dandelion, he goes in with the Skeleton Barrel naked, especially in single elixir time uh, when he doesn't have an obvious play. He forces out a freeze there that time by Anaban. So, you know, can't, can't complain. And now we got the NATO out of hand, but like, hmm. I wonder, we're gonna have to get like a big Mega Knight push. And notice how he's not using his Mega Knights usually until double elixir time. You can defend with this deck usually without having to use all the time your Mega Knight, especially in matchups like this, where there's a few air cards, the win condition is an air card. Just wait against air matchups, air win conditions, balloon, lava hound. Wait on, on the, oh, and there's the P.E.K.K.A. too. Man, this is a tough matchup, right? Because I'm, I'm looking at our deck Anaban can NATO, can Baby D, he can NATO, he can Zap, he can Freeze, and then he can P.E.K.K.A. on our Mega Knight as well. So, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like this is incredibly challenging. This time we go in uh, with the Inferno Dragon here on the P.E.K.K.A. Freeze comes down by Anaban. What a freeze there. And here comes Balloon as well. Freeze is not in hand, but we have Snowball in hand, right? Zap comes down, we push that, snow, that Balloon back, excuse me. But Anaban's going to score a Balloon hit, I think. Dude, somehow, some way, able to stop that balloon from connecting to our left tower. And here goes a skeleton barrel in the right lane. Baby D reloaded for Anaban. This one's gonna go until uh, sudden death overtime. So here we go. It's an ice whiz in the left. We're gonna have to respond to it. Three seconds. We do so with a goblin gang there. And here comes the baby dragon pushing that balloon into the Inferno D. Ooh. Snowball the very last second. Freeze comes down, though. One HP left on that balloon. Spirit Goblins finish the job. Here we go. Damage is pretty even here. We keep attacking with these skeleton barrels at the bridge in the left-hand lane, always applying that skeleton barrel pressure, forcing a response out of Anaban, and oftentimes we're getting damage. Skeleton barrel is... And look at this Goblin Gang, guys. Look at the Goblin Gang. That was a perfect positioning on the Goblin Gang to counter a baby dragon. Our Spear Goblins stay alive. The regular Gobbo's first Mega Knight play, by the way, comes 40 seconds almost into uh, double elixir time. Freeze comes down again. Oh my god, sorry, so much going on here. We get one balloon hit, that's it though. Mega Knight on the right tower, guys. Mega Knight stomps down, hits once, hits twice, hits three times, and that's gonna be GG. Anaban says, oops, how do we win that against Anaban? Unbelievable, guys. Whoa. All right, let's go to the next one, guys. All right, guys, here we go against PUBG. Again, incredible players everywhere here. Neither of those wall breakers will connect. So going against the wall breaker magic archer deck, no surprise here at top ladder. This is, I think, uh, maybe not the number one. Is it the number one deck right now? I haven't checked in the last couple days. I've been too busy lamenting the fall of the, uh, the stock market. <laughs> so I haven't been up on my, uh, on my stats in terms of deck win percentages. But... Yeah, we are, uh, this is definitely up there. It's a, uh, it looks like the mini P.E.K.K.A. version here instead of the Valkyrie. So we'll see how we handle this one. Is Bomb Tower or is it? Yeah, it's going to be like Bomb Tower. I'm getting all these, these Wall Breaker Cycle decks confused, right? Anyway, we will see. We're about one minute into this match here. I still am kind of reeling from the finish there. How did he beat Anaban with that deck? Especially, you know, that one push where the baby dragon pushed the balloon into the right tower. How did he stop that? Uh, anyway, here we go. It's going to be the Inferno Dragon, the Skeleton Barrel in the right lane, responding to that Magic Archer. And here it goes. What is PUBG hat? Does he have a Snowball or a Log? Barbaro, what's his last card? It's a Log. Perfect timing on that Log denying all skeleton damage on that right tower but we do have the damage advantage here guys halfway through this contest we go and apply that minor right to the front of the tower gonna score three shovel hits before that mini pekka finishes him off now we're gonna go back to immediately but hey PUBG is ready with the predictive magic archer it's okay we have spirit goblins in hand as well luckily able to prevent that mini pekka from actually connecting to the tower one spear, a spear goblin kind of chipping away at that magic archer we push everything back and uh, that one spirit goblin does a good work there against the Magic Archer. Now we have Bats down. We finish off one of those wall breakers, but not both. And PUBG strikes, uh, gaining the damage advantage here, albeit ever so slightly, going into double elixir time. So here we go, guys. Double elixir time. It is minor and log, the last two cards. So it's a minor wall breaker deck uh, with the Mini P.E.K.K.A. and the Magic Archer. We go in again with the Skeleton Barrel and the Spear Goblins there. That's kind of an annoying five elixir push. I'm not going to lie. The Spear Goblins with the Skeleton Barrel make 
making the opponent choose do they use uh you know their counters against the spirit goblins or against the skeleton barrel do they wait all right here we go it's going to be mega knight first mega knight played of the entire match again coming two minutes and 30 seconds or so into this contest again just showing how disciplined he is with not without using excuse me those aggressive mega knights throughout the the, the normal uh normal elixir generation portion of these matches here we go again with the gobos gobos are going to finish off that magic archer we're not going to get too much damage their damage really really close to even again this one again is going to be going until sudden death over time and again we're attacking opposite with that same push spear goblins and the skeleton barrel take notes spear goblin skeleton barrel push is one of the favorite pushes that dandelion has he's always sending in at least the, those skeleton barrels in the opposite lane just applying that pressure constantly this time we use a skeleton barrel as a distraction here and we're able to cycle what he's doing here sometimes with these skeleton barrels too when he plays them unorthodox like that he's providing a, a cycle to get back to his goblin gang back to his his spear goblins that way he has more responses for these mini peckas more distraction units on the board and we can just keep cycling back to more and more and more skeleton barrels uh, matter of fact this time mini pekka does score a hit though on the left tower we use spear goblins way in the back but we do have the damage advantage again we send in that miner to the back pulling the mini pekka with him spear goblins are going to connect to the the tower three spear oh magic archer with a an arrow through all of their heads 9 11 remaining on that left tower someone called 911 i had to make the dad joke i had to do it that someone called 911 that magic archer just uh Right, I can't think of anything super family friendly. Just uh, destroyed those spirit goblins. Here we go with the miner to the back of the tower. Miner's gonna get one, make it uh, two shovel hits, and make it three. So we're getting plenty of damage there. Four shovel hits to that left tower. Here comes the snowball. Snowball connects. A Larry's RNG, RNG. Nice skeletons there by PUBG, but not gonna be enough. 196 remaining on that left tower. All we have is a miner and a snowball in terms of direct damage potential in this deck. Here we go. The opponent PUBG just cycling and cycling and cycling. We go into the minor. A defensive minor placed there by PUBG. But our minor pulls a 180 and about face. And boom, shovel hits that tower down. There we go. That's three in a row. Whew. Let's go into the next one, guys. All right, guys, we are currently seventh in the world right now going into this next match. So this could put us at, it's really tight at the top of ladder right now too. This could potentially put us at number three, depending on how many trophies we gain if we win this match. And again, wall breakers are the first cards out of the opponent's deck. They respond to this miner with the bats, not before we get a couple chip hits with that miner to the right tower and miner comes in from the opponent as well. Danny Lyons happy to just go ahead and snowball those away and then play the spirit goblins directly on top of the miner. Not afraid to defend in this deck, even if it means falling to an early elixir deficit at 40 seconds here into this contest. Snowball comes down from the opponent. Again, like, you know, responding to that minor, uh, an easy decision, right? Because then the opponent has to respond to the Goblin Gang. This time it's the uh, the Bomb Tower version of this deck. This seems a little bit more challenging to me than the Mini P.E.K.K.A. version that we saw a, uh, you know, a, the last match. So here we go. Inferno Dragon cycled in the back going to be a perfect placement to distract the magic archer and allow him to still be targeted by our princess tower don't pull off the uh, king tower activation though i thought maybe for a second we might be able to get that off we don't and here comes the uh, gobos down just to make sure they distract that inferno dragon on the defensive end from the opponent here comes a miner from the opponent switching sides switching towers we respond uh nonetheless with the bats and we attack opposite lane again with that naked skeleton barrel forcing a bomb tower and a three for four uh trade from the opponent this time unfortunately that miner actually goes into the spot where the bomb tower is targeting so really mitigates any minor chip onto that left tower so here we go almost already about 15 seconds away guys from double elixir time and uh very 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 slight damage advantage for us again uh not using the mega knight again just have to keep pointing that out to you guys if you're losing with this deck and you're not going into uh overtime a lot or you're playing your mega knight a lot early in the match maybe you're doing something wrong right maybe you're being too aggressive with your mega knight you're not waiting for a total double elixir appropriately of course we haven't gone out gone against excuse me like royal hogs or hogs deck uh where of course you could be more aggressive uh with your Mega Knights in single elixir time in those cases. These have been like all, for the most part, just cycle decks or the crazy Anaban deck, you know? Uh, anyway, here we go. It's gonna be Bomb Tower again down in the right lane. 
Miner chipping away at the left. Here we go. It's going to be a Miner on the right tower. Can we get through that bomb tower? We cannot get through these bomb towers here, but still able to chip away to keep us inside this contest, not only inside the contest, but also still in the damage lead. Here we go, the bath cycled way in the back in the right, 12, 11, 10 seconds remaining on the clock here, guys. We got a minor uh, intercepted by those uh, spear goblins, or goblin gang, excuse me, in the left. Meanwhile, a lot going on here, guys. We had the bomb tower taking care of the entire skeleton barrel. That was really well done by the opponent. This bomb tower is proving to be really annoying here. Newsflash, this time the Magic Archer is not going to get in range of that tower, didn't think so. And Spirit Goblin Skeleton Barrel push again here in the right bomb tower again. Just nicely placed by the opponent, can sit back and relax, we go in with the Miner here. Miner to distract that bomb tower, beautiful Miner on that, the timing on that Miner, right? To make sure we get a couple Larrys on that tower, chip it away to 1802. Meanwhile, Mega Knight is going to leap onto the left tower. He's going to get one, make it two, maybe three hits, and it is three on that left tower. We go in the Miner again. This time the Miner is on time, but the opponent has that Snowball at the ready. They're keen to our little secret strategy of sending in that Miner last second to distract the Bomb Tower before the Skeleton Barrel uh, explodes or implodes or drops or whatever it does. Anyway, here we go. It's again, it's going to be the Inferno Dragon against that Magic Archer, but not before that Magic Archer got a few hits there to the left tower. Here we go again with the Skeleton Barrel and again the Bomb Tower from the opponent. Let's see what we do. Do we send in the Miner or what are we going to do here? Spirit Goblins are down. Snowball. Okay, so perfect. Ah! He uses the Snowball on offense, so we couldn't send in the Miner. Ah, that crap. That, that sucks. That sucks. I thought when he used the Snowball, we had an opportunity there. The Magic Archer un unable to connect. We play the Mega Knight right on top of it. Valkyrie down from the opponent. 41 seconds remaining here. It's not lost yet. Neither of these guys have a big spell in their deck. Again, we catch that uh, that that Miner just barely there using one of our Spear Goblins from the Goblin Gang. And again, a big aggressive attack here in the right lane. 14, 26, 28, 27, 26 seconds remaining here on the clock. Uh, Mega Knight down, Mega Knight down, making sure he angles it appropriately so we don't take that hit from the Magic Archer. We go Spear Goblins to help out against those bats. Two Magic Archers in the left lane. 15 seconds to go here, guys. We need to defend and we need to somehow get enough damage to that right tower. High bomb tower from the opponent. We catch that Miner again, but it's probably going to be too little too late here. Five, four, three seconds remaining. That Miner's all over the place, but except for on the tower, and there it goes. We lose on the tiebreaker. Unfortunately, man, that got crazy in Triple Elixir time. So much going on, but unfortunately, we do take the fail. Let's go ahead and show uh, one replay, guys. A really good replay for you. <clears throat> All right, guys, so we have one replay uh, set aside for you guys. And again, it is the, maybe the, the uh, I looked through the replays. He shared a few with me. And this one is basically the same deck. It's a little bit different than we just watched. But this is how you can go against that same deck and actually have success. Uh, and this deck is everywhere right now. So I, I figured we'll show how to beat Bomb Tower. We just, show, we sh just showed how to lose to Bomb Tower. Now we'll show how to beat it. You guys saw that kind of maneuver that, that he did. Danny Lyon, by the way, at the top of your screen. And another reason I love showing these replays is, yeah, you guessed it. So we can actually see what cards he has selected in his hand. So he has Mega Knight here. I believe Mega Knight was in his starting hand. Let's see how long he holds on to it. Here we go. It's going to be uh, Valkyrie down. Bomber, I mean, excuse me, Wallbreaker is not going to connect to his tower there. So nice defense. Inferno Dragon doing a lot of the heavy lifting there with, against that Valkyrie. We do take one Valkyrie swing to that left tower of ours, though. Now we go uh, with the counter attack. And here it goes. It's going to be that Skeleton uh, Barrel along with the Inferno Dragon. Obviously, none of those Larrys will actually... Actually, some of them do make it to the tower before that that uh, death bomb of the bomb tower explodes. So, hey, not bad. An easy way to get uh, a few hundred chip damage off of that left tower. Miner is... Uh is met with those skeletons, but he will get a few hits on that right tower as well, bringing that down to the lowest HP tower in the game right now. So halfway through this match, the opponent is, again, really a big fan of splitting wall breakers late into the match. We go ahead and snowball that left wall breaker, not wanting to take more damage to our weak side tower. So here we go with the Inferno. Interesting. We go with the Inferno Dragon here, knowing that there's no zap in, uh, in the opponent's hand in their deck in general. Uh, instead of going with the Mega Knight there. So just, again, not using that Mega Knight. Mega Knight has been in hand the entire match so far. Really more apt to go with the Inferno Dragon on the defensive end, right? Here we go, Magic Archer reloaded. Inferno Dragon does lock on, but Magic Archer will finish him off. Again, we do have the damage advantage. Not a huge one, but a significant one, I guess. 
So here we go again. It's going to be Wallbreakers in the left lane. We get a uh, Spear Goblins way back in the right lane. Bats played directly on top of that Magic Archer, but beautiful play by the opponent. Eh, it didn't really pay off that much, did it, though? The nice NATO there to get that Magic Archer have one hit on the tower and also take down all those splash units of Dandelion. So here we go again. Skeleton Barrel coming down the left. We have a high, high bomb tower played there. Valkyrie as well, try to, you know, stop that miner from sniping the Magic Archer. Magic Archers are such a pain, right? Against this deck especially. Still haven't used that Mega Knight, but we have him in hand right now. I think he's going to come down. He does. Mega Knight storms down on top of the miner there. Let's see. Magic Archer going to connect? Yes, he does. Oof. Oof. Just two hits, but still. Another Magic Archer reloaded in the back. Here we go again. This is going to go until double elixir time. The opponent's going to pull off that nice King Tower activation as well. Valkyrie is down to meet that Mega Knight. How does he win this match, guys? I mean, we will see one minute away in change from triple elixir time. Again, skeleton barrels all the while going down the left lane. You guys are starting to see the habits of Dandelion here, which makes him such a good player, right? He's always, always, whenever it's in hand, he is dropping down those skeleton barrels either on the defensive side, on his side of the arena, or aggressively in the opposite lane, always applying that pressure. Let's see what he does here. You can see his hand, and again, boom, skeleton barrels in hand. I'm going to use it. I don't care if they have bomb tower. I'm going to use it. And here we go. Just kind of getting that chip damage down with that miner. And that's the key, right? Is set, Even though they have Bomb Tower, we're not afraid to continue sending in our Skeleton Barrels when they have it in hand. And we send in those Miners. We have Miner selected right now. Miner goes in. Miner is on the Magic Archer. Snowball comes down. That's going to be GG. So well played there. I mean, I feel like I have a, if I have a good grasp of this deck, then certainly you guys probably do as well. But guys, thank you so much to Daniel Lyon. Check out his player stats and profile. Thanks to StatsReal.com. Thanks again for using my creator code, guys. I really appreciate it. Huge announcement on where that money's going uh, really soon here on the channel, hopefully in the next couple weeks. And uh, guys, huge shout out, of course, to Daniel Lyon. Check out his, uh, his Twitter information as well. And of course, big shout out to Bren Chung, my YouTube partner. Check out his information as well. Thanks for watching. And as always, Take care, guys.